Hey y'all, welcome back to Spirit of the Outdoors. I decided before I start the buckskin jacket that I'm gonna make a shirt. Now, granted, my, some of my softest hides are some of the ones I did early on, some of them later, none of them are perfect. In other words, this one here, there's some places where when I was fleshing, I didn't get all that outside off. I don't know why I didn't. Oh. Uh, the, during the learning process, I've, I've had nobody to show me anything. Everything I have learned, I have got bits and pieces from here, there, and yonder, and YouTube videos. And it is very hard to even make a video really showing how to do it or to learn from a video because there's just little things that you miss that you don't really understand how important it is. So it just kind of takes time for somebody, unless you've got somebody hands-on to show you do this, do that, oh no, don't do that, do this, and it, it's better that way. So I have about got it figured out, um, but it's been a lot of trial and error. Nevertheless, these hides are good enough for me to make a shirt, and I wanted to make a shirt before I started the jacket so that if I learned something, didn't know something, because they're gonna be very similar in design, uh, that I, I, you know, my jacket would possibly turn out better than the shirt because if the shirt's not so great, don't matter. So I have three hides laid aside that I'm gonna do this out of. So my my, my thinking is I took a t-shirt that I know fits me, and I'm gonna pull it down under where I want it. I am going to attempt to probably fringe it. I don't know about down the sides. Oh. Uh, and and this uh, these do not lay like perfectly flat. So I chose the better part of the hide and I'm I don't know if I'm not going I may go all the way up here to the top. I don't I need to pull it down just a hair. So what I'm doing, and I, let me turn the camera down a hair, is I'm gonna lay this shirt out and then I'm gonna draw my design. See, there's a hole, so I want my corner. And I'm gonna, this is gonna be the back of it now. And I'm gonna cut this out around the pattern of this T-shirt, okay? And these scrap pieces, y'all, I, I will make a uh, fringe and different things out of them. And you need to leave a little room. I'm drawing around this shirt right now. They say to leave a half inch to do the seams with. I, while I'm doing stuff, it's hard for me to talk if I'm concentrating on what I'm doing. So the hides you see are not Perfect as far as straight. So I'm drawing right on where I want my, basically my seam to be. So the hardest thing they say in the world to do is to make the first cut in a buckskin you tan. So yeah, I can see where, you know, you cause you, a lot of it, you know, I'm really uncertain about what I'm doing. <laughs> So anyway, let's make let's get the first cut over with. I'm gonna start with this hole right here. All right, first cut over with because I'm gonna drop down with all of that a hair because I thought I was below that hole, but I am not. 
So I'm cutting inside my line here. And that means I gotta drop everything down a hair. There you go. Does it look somewhat like a shirt? Got a little bit of a neck. I may have to cut that neck a little bigger. I don't know. That's going to be the back part of it. So I left the bottom ragged. I'm probably either going to fringe all of that around the bottom. I don't know. We're going to see. So let's cut out the next part. So the skin that I chose for the front is the softest but probably in the worst shape i have got some stitching done on it uh, this that and the other so i'm gonna try to start get below where all these holes and stuff are and i'm probably gonna v-neck the bottom of my shirt here So y'all see, I am just kind of flying right here by the seat of my britches with this. And I'm sure the sitting down and actually stitching this business is gonna be quite uh, entertaining, and long time consuming and all such as that, so. Y'all, I think the secret to doing about anything like this is to not overthink it. If you go at it all worried about how precise everything's got to be, you set yourself up for a lot of headache. Or at least that is the way I see it. Under here, I have laid my scrap piece in there that I'm gonna make my fringe out of. And y'all, simply all I'm gonna do is start under this armpit right here. And I'm just gonna keep this these three lined up and I'm just simply gonna start sewing that. And I'm gonna probably whip stitch it. It'd be ideal if I had a sewing machine and could sew it, but that's three pieces of buckskin. All right, I've got plenty of strain run off and I got my specs on see about threading this needle through here I don't know why they started making these needle eyes so fuzzy they used to make them a lot more crisp, you know, where you could see through them, but now they, they've started making them really fuzzy. <laughs> they say I can't hear cause of shooting guns and such as that with no hearing protection. I, re I reckon I can't see cause I hadn't worn no eye glasses all my life. I guess wearing them safety glasses, I'd still be able to see. Anyway. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to let y'all sit here and watch me stitch all of this, y'all. Because we we allowed to be here for uh, a, a short minute. And an old seamstress, she would have pinned all this into place. I didn't. I don't, I don't do much of that.
Well, let me find my needle again. I can see where I'm going to need a chair and turn my and put y'all up and turn my book back on because I'm going to be here a while. I can just about prophesy that. <laughs> anyway. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tie this first bit right here off good. couple of good hitches and y'all I'm not expecting this shirt to come out perfect I, I fully expect and really want it to look a little bit crude I do not want it to just look like crap now by any means y'all but if anybody's watching this and you're expecting like garments, it, um, professionalism and it to be perfection, it, it ain't gonna. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you now, you're gonna probably be disappointed. We'll see though. We'll see. We might all be surprised. Well, anyway, I'm gonna work my way. I'm gonna get me a chair over here. I'm gonna go on and sit down. Uh, yeah, that's much more gooder. I had a cup of coffee earlier. I might as well drag it over here too. If I spill it on there, it'll be all right, won't it? Oh yeah, this done got cold too. Real nice and cold for hot weather. <laughs> oh Lord. All right. I don't know how tight I want these seams. But here we go. Gonna be a lot of pulling that thread through. I may wish I'd have done short sections and I don't see where that'd be a problem. In other words, get a short piece of thread and sew it to here and tie it off and start over. But we, we've started this way and that's what I'm gonna do. So. I'm going to let you see just a couple of stitches and then I'm going to let y'all go do something else. Y'all go cook hamburgers or something. Might want to go read you a book while I'm listening to mine. When we get this side stitched up, I'll, uh, I'll let y'all come back and see what I got done and how it looks. All right, you see how this is going? I'm gonna sew this up and then we'll pick y'all back up after a while. Y'all, I am just about through with both sides. I started on the other side, finished it off camera, and then I started this side off camera and got pretty well through with it. Cause it's just been the same repetitive motion over and over. Poke a hole, run a needle through, and it has took me a couple of hours, hour and a half maybe to do this. We probably somewhere in the neighborhood of two hours. So it's it's a time consuming process. It is not that complicated. You can build, you can make one of these if you want to. Uh, the reason they're expensive is the time uh, and then the hides. 
there's a lot of work went into these hides way before it ever started becoming a, a shirt so i'm i'm learning but i'm confident that it's not that big a deal oh, now i may get through with it and go oh lord i messed up <laughs> so all right right here this is the last hole pull this show you my loop all right i'm gonna go through my loop right here one time and go back through it twice and i'm gonna pull that tight okay i'm gonna go back through the hole i made in the garment go through the hole one time through the hole twice all right now pull this over here get my trusty old bit all right y'all right, that's the sides done all right y'all you can kind of see we turn you up just a little bit now, obviously, it's inside out, but this is, that is the front, which it's inside out, so. Oh. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> it's gonna be like a sweat, a t-shirt. Look, we fixing to have an eat at the cabin. My sister has brought us some crabs. We fix to go over there and cook and eat, cause y'all know it is holiday weekend here, Saturday afternoon. We'll get back out here and get on this. I'm going to stitch these top shoulders up. I don't know if I'm going to put any fringe up there or not. I, I, I've got several pieces here. It will not be hard to do to just stick a piece of this in there and then cut it up into fringe. I, I just, I don't know if I want fringe up there or not. You know what I mean, Vern? So I'm going to make a decision on that. Think about it. We'll get back on this here shortly. gotten smarter as I've been working on this I do a run of holes at a time leave that in there to keep it lined up I have already went through like it standing up and poked all of them all the way to the end but you kind of got to hold it up and and run that all the way through to open up that bottom hole a little bit so then you can go, and I have found that this circle needle I'm using has a burr. So I need to go get a file and and work on that. But it hadn't been like a deal breaker, so I have just kind of left it alone for now. I am almost through with the top shoulders at this point. My belly is full of catfish, crabs, taters and i'm gonna tell you what now what was fine eating over there they boiled some eggs in with that crab boil and stuff and you could take that boiled egg out of there and sprinkle some of that tony saturies on it oh it was fine I must have not have seen where I didn't pull that one on through and I had to struggle with it. Yep, 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 yep. So let me. I'm not gonna do the sleeves y'all today. So I don't know when I'll actually finish this video. I am a mite tired of 
fooling with this today, which was to be expected. This, the sewing part of this is quite a project, so. I, I totally understand why a buckskin shirt is a couple of hundred dollars. I mean, very, very easily. $300 is, is not too much for one. There's a lot of work goes in there because you've got at least $200 worth of hides in it. If it's long sleeve, you know, even more, but you see a lot of them are short sleeved. Well, I see why now they kind of cut that out of one hide, but that just kind of looked, I, I want it. I don't know how it's going to look. I want it to look like I put a little more effort in it and, and like tried to make a shirt I don't want it to look like I just done the easiest thing it was to do, you know. Uh, because I feel like I will use this pair of buckskins for quite a while. Uh, I'm not going to go haul pup wood in them. I will wear them out hunting and and filming videos. and uh, I, I really want to use them when I'm doing my medicinal plants. So... I'm not going to be out doing hard manual labor while I'm wearing this is what I'm saying. So I shouldn't just wear them out. And I think making the pants is going to be my big undertaking. So here at the end, I am doing this the same way. So I made that loop and then I'm going to go through under my string right here twice. And pull that down tight. And then I'm gonna do it again. Just to, for security. I feel like doing that one time would probably hit, would hold it. You wouldn't have to do this twice, but I, that may make a knot there on my shoulder or something that I'm like, I can't deal with that. I mean, y'all know what I'm talking about, so. All right, we are, for the most part, through with this part. So I'm going to see about turning this inside out and let's look at what type of a poncho we've got here y'all. And how well this part of it fits. Y'all I may get in this and can't get out of it, reckon. Oh, I hung my feather and pulled it loose. Mm. Okay. Right. First thing I have noticed already is the uh, neck right here. I didn't want to get my head through this and can't get out of it. So I need to split this neck right here in the center just a little. I wanted to do it with these cutters so I could get it. I am possibly going to sew a piece under there. y'all getting it on and off may be a trip but I will say this it fits all right y'all I'm gonna turn the camera down and show you what I'm doing right here think that more gooder um this is the book I am somewhat going by and I also have this book but now when you get into the and it's good for the tanning 
all the information for tanning and how to do the hide this is probably a better tanning book but when you get over to garment making this book lacks uh, i mean this got some nice pictures that's what it talks about with a hide and then it shows you some stuff that people have built and it shows you some overall looks and designs but it don't give you no pattern no nothing about you know it shows you where to cut the hides out it just like and then it, it does okay over here with the primitive stitching and stuff so i'm going more with this this book here and it has patterns in it okay not in depth it's got about stitching and and it tells you how to tan a hide too okay but this is what I am going by, and I want to get a good, and if y'all want to pause that where you can see it, and I know you ain't going to be able to read all that. But anyway, that is kind of what your pattern looks like. So that being said here, I'm just trying to keep you one, but I have got a whole different hide, and I had another hide that I wanted to use. It was a lot softer. This one has a stiff spot right up here. I didn't, you see where I didn't get it tanned real good all the way to neck, but I'm cutting all of that off. So I think it's gonna be all right for me making the sleeves. This hide is, uh, is big enough that I think I can get both sleeves out of the hide. However, one of them is gonna have a few holes in it. Not a huge deal for me, not for my first shirt. I, I'm learning how to make it. I'll do better tanning the hides next time. So, this is the upper part of my sleeve it comes across the distance from the very top of the shoulder to where this kind of swoops out you got two and a half inches the reason i come up with two and a half is it's a quarter of the diameter around this and and it says measure around your arm but y'all what i've done is i measured the hole that it has got a stitch to and uh so um, that's what I went by and then it tapers down and then I measured with this tape measure Around my wrist and I got this and held it and it crosses it about 11 and a half inches. So I cut 12 and uh, If I overlap 12 a half an inch I can get my hand in and out of that see what I'm saying So cutting it 12 gives me some seam on it you don't want it so tight you can't get your fist through there. See what I mean? Think about all this. So I'm just using common sense. As I make this, I've drew it out with a pencil. And I hope that'll come off. So I'm fixing to cut this pattern out. Now, y'all, I'm probably not going to do perfect. I never do. But I make it work. So here we go. These, all these buckskins ain't no good if you can't cut them up and make something out of them. Just collecting them in a garbage sack for the birds. Okay, I got this piece cut out, y'all, and I was going to show you now what, just for good measure. Just to make sure I got it as soft as I can get it. Because I probably didn't work them perfectly. Now I'm going to use this to lay on here. That way I get my other pattern the same. That way if I mess one up, I'll have them both messed up. That's kind of what you're trying to do, ain't it? <laughs> oh, Lord. Y'all know I'm having fun with you. Oh, uh, that ain't going to be too bad, I don't think. going to be good and close. So what I'll do now is trace around this. And you see I got wrinkles in this hide. So I, as I stitch, and I wanted the softer part up here at my shoulder, not down here, because I'll be harder on this. This being soft means I'll be able to move more. A lot of people want to turn around and put the soft down here around the hand where it feels better. But that ain't going to... Uh, that ain't what I'm gonna do anyway. I got both of these I did this way. So 
Some of you might want to attempt to build one of these, and I know some of y'all have. I know uh, a lot of y'all that watch my channel have done done all this stuff. Y'all might can give me some tips that'll help me, reckon. Hey, I take all the advice I can get. I'm new to this, but hey, I like it. It's fun. Oh, we got that drawed out. See, I'm gonna have a hole there, and I got that other hole right at the seam where I'd cut it out, and I dodged that hole, so it's gonna be minimal. It ain't gonna be that one hole back. But I can, what I'll do is that hole right there, I'll tell my grand youngins that's where I got shot. <laughs> Let's get this cut out. I may need some of that for fringe. I know I got a fringe you backs of these sleeves, both of them. I started cutting on this shirt right here. You see how that fringe is on there? So I'll cut it. I'll sit out there on the porch and sip coffee and cut it all when I get the sleeves made sometime tomorrow or something. Oh, all right. Well, we got two of these now to sew up. So what I'm gonna do is lay this right here. And just like I did yesterday, I gotta pick me out some. Lay this over here. Well, I don't whack it up. Find me some stuff for fringe here. Yeah. And you can put this fringe all in two pieces if you need to. In other words, see how I got a, I got a good soft piece that I'd really like to use. So I'm going to start it. And I don't mind some of it being a little longer. But I cut it. I don't know if you can tell. There's a corner in it right there where I changed the angle and the pattern I was cutting. So I'm going to cut this off and I'll just put it in there in two pieces, see. But I'm going to cut this angle right here. Uh, oh, yeah. That'll do it right there. There is a plenty. I want to turn it all the same way though. And I'll make sure I keep it pulled up in there good as I do it. All right, I got my fringe laid in there. Now I'll have to readjust it as I start sewing. I think that's what I want to do. All right, so when I'm doing this, now I don't want to get, you do not want to stitch over a quarter inch back into your sleeve because you take it up, you're, You know what I'm talking about. Taking up your room in your sleeve. So. But you want to be far enough in it that it ain't going to damage. So what I'm going to do is start this and then tie this one off because you struggle to keep all of this lined up. And I pulled off three times the length of my sleeve from my strain just to make sure I had enough. I did more than that yesterday and I had what I pulled off done the whole both sides and the top and everything else. So it don't take as a lot like it does a knife sheath. A knife sheath takes quite a bit. 
but you're going through most every hole twice, so that's why it does. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and singe that off and burn it. And that'll be up under my arm and irritating me and you know all that kind of good stuff. So that'll be nice. Alright, here we go, just as yesterday. For y'all a few minutes ago, I'm having to get back to swing of things because it's been 24 hours. We had church uh, this morning, had good service. And uh, my wife went over there to be with her family. Her grandmother passed away in the night last night, which I had mentioned on my live. We were well expecting that. So nothing bad. Uh, she was 101 years old, lived a good life, a good godly woman. And she was ready to go be with the Lord. She had done told her she was ready to go home. She couldn't see after herself. She was having to be seen after, and that's... That's not much of a life for a person that's like her. She's always worked and done and been a patriarch to the family and held the family together and mowed grass and worked fields. And that, I mean, you wouldn't believe the stories that woman could tell you about life. So anyway, she was ready to go home. She had a loved ones, had a daughter that had done gone on that died really, really young, like as a teenager, many, many years ago before I was born. So her husband was already gone, so it's actually a celebration. It's but my wife and Brody and all them went over there today, so I am it was a house full of people, y'all. I didn't want to go be in all that. Get in their way, just be standing around, you know. We'll have, we'll, I'll be with them all during the funeral and stuff. So anyway, I'm going to sit here and just as you see me doing this, whip stitch all of this up, I'll pick y'all up when I get it done. We'll see what it looks like. Well, y'all, I am just about through with this sleeve. There is a stiff spot down here toward the end. And it's, it's not unbearable, but it is a little stiffer than I am comfortable with. So what I'm going to do, when I get through with this sleeve, I'm going to take a sander and I'm going to go over all of it. But mainly this is the area right in here that is a little stiff. The rest of this is very manageable. And I'm going to sand it and then I'm going to turn it inside out and I'm going to sand the outside good gonna change it and then I'm gonna rub it down with neat's foot oil and I'm gonna do a light coating of oil and just see if that helps if it, if it don't make a huge difference I'm not gonna worry about it I, it'll still be a usable jacket or shirt very much worn and it'll break over time and it, the more you wear it the, the limber it'll get I mean when you first start, you notice I poke a hole, run a stitch through it, poke a hole. Once you get started and get seven, eight, or ten stitches in, you can kind of, you've got stuff kind of lined up at that point, and you can kind of run with it. And I can, I'll do eight or ten holes at a time and then stitch through them. So I just know you, you see me doing a couple of different things and. And I'm videoing this, y'all, in stages, so forgive me if I'm repetitive on things that I say, because you got to remember, I filmed part of this yesterday and then part of it again today, and I don't know what I said and didn't say, and, you know, I, if, if somebody is watching this in hopes of, I want to make me one, how you doing this, that, and the other, I'd rather tell y'all now what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, versus having to answer a bunch of questions and comments. Because I'm like some of y'all. I'd rather be a mountain man and, than doing all that pecking on no keyboard to explain it. It's easier for me to tell you right him. <laughs> and I'm new to it, so I really don't... I'm really not sh doing a how-to video. But now I will say this, there's not a lot of videos out there on good 
how to make buckskin clothes. I mean, there's a bunch of tanning videos that people talk about it, but you, they, nobody's really making anything on camera that I've found. Now, if it's out there, I hadn't found it. They didn't, they didn't title it in a way that it could be searched. So hopefully, by the time I do the jacket, I can confess that I am somewhat experienced. Right here, Luke. I'm gonna go through it twice. And we're gonna cinch her down. And then I'm gonna go through her. I'm gonna do that again. Okay, y'all. Now what I what I'm gonna do at this point, this is making a sleeve. I'm not going to film making the other sleeve. We're going to be... When I turn this camera back on, both sleeves will be made and we'll be starting ready to attach them to the shirt. But Y'all, I finished both sleeves. Sanded them. Or sanded one of them. The other one wasn't in that bad of shape. And then I've got one that I have already put in here. Um... Now, I had to take a break, go to church, and then we went and spent some time over at the family's, eat some dinner, supper, actually, we call it here, supper's at night, dinner's at, at lunch. That's a whole nother subject. We'll get into that in a different video. <laughs> but I am stitching this arm in here, and what I've done is I stuck the arm in there, just slid it in here, and turned the shirt inside out. And you gotta be mindful of which way you turn what and which sleeve you put in where. It, it, I'll be honest with you, I sat here for a few minutes trying to figure that out. But in other words, I am just about through with one side, and I'm worried I'm fixing to knock my tea over. I got Smilax tea, y'all. This is the Greenbrier root. You see how reddish looking that is? It has sort of a sweet flavor to it. Oh. But I'm just about through sewing this, and it is night. It is almost 11 o'clock, which I didn't come down here. It took me about an hour, hour and a half to finish up a sleeve and then sew it all the way around. Uh, and I did discover that I had to bunch some of this up to make the make it come out. The, and I bunched where it was the softest part of this. I kind of gathered it up. I don't know how it's gonna turn out. So what I'm saying with that is when you measure around this hole on your shirt part or your jacket or whatever, Make sure you cut precisely that. Don't give it extra little bit. I mean, it, cause my extra little bit I thought was gonna be in the seam. I didn't, I wound up with like an inch and a half too much. So, and these, these buckskin stretch some, I mean, a lot of it, there's a lot of stuff. So you, it's tricky, but if you pay attention while you're sewing, you can work it out. Uh, it's not going to just work out perfect, but you can work it out. So take it for what it's worth. That's, I'm just giving you tips of what I'm learning in case that you decide to build yourself one. Uh, I am through with that part. So the reason I turned the camera on, I'm going to go ahead and turn the uh, shirt I'm trying to figure out which way I want to turn it so I can see all right y'all now obviously I have got to cut the fringe so there is a shirt with a sleeve on it
and I'm going to cut it probably a little wider than I normally would like to. I like the fringe to be thin strips I do for, for look, but I can see how time consuming. All right, y'all, I have got both sleeves now finally put together. Oh, I just got this one stitched up and I've been wearing them spectacles so long my eyes is, you know, when you ain't used to wearing them for long periods of time. So let's see about turning all of this back right side out. These, both of these sleeves, y'all, like I have said probably several times already, a little stiffer than, than what you want. But it's been a good learning experience for me. And uh, now I will say I feel very confident in building my jacket. I feel like I can do it successfully and make a actually a quality jacket now. I was a little nervous about it before I did this. So, Experience is a huge confidence booster. So that is why I made this like I did. So that is why you see me struggling slightly with this sleeve. Okay, y'all, I have walked well, this morning. I cut one of the sleeves, the fringe on it. So this is the one I just finished sewing in. I started cutting fringe on it beforehand. So let me show you right quick how I'm doing that. I discovered that these tin snips right here that spring open, these are old and they hang just a little bit and it's because I tightened them up where they would cut better. So they don't just pop, but they do come open a lot better than the other. These, I don't have a good pair of scissors You probably got you a real good pair of scissors. I have got some scissors here and I hadn't tried them on every one of them, but they don't cut good. They, they keep wadding it up and cutting crooked. So that is why I hadn't been using them. So if you're having trouble with your scissors, a pair of these kind of tin snips really seem to work better to me. And they cut in the middle, mine do, better than the tip or the very back. So, so what I'm going to do is go down through here and cut all of this. Then I have to cut all of this. But I wanted you to see the seams real good and see kind of how that that is showing up and you can see I've, I've got some what you'd really call pleats where I had to make this fit because my diameter around my sleeve was not precisely the same as my shirt so y'all so far I am very well pleased with it now obviously the front is a little longer than the back so I may after I fringe all the sleeves and the sides <laughs> I may draw me a line across here and fringe the front and the back. I don't know yet. I kind of like this natural look right here. I don't, something about it is appealing to me, but I don't know what is practical. The fringe on something is for the water to make the water drip off away from your arms and stuff. So that is the purpose of the fringe. But now for me, it's more about look than it is actual function so i'm gonna get all this cut and for the sake of the video i'll pick y'all back up when i am totally done with all of this y'all i'm gonna update you i've decided cutting these on this block like this with my knife is really easier and that's the way the native americans and the mountain men would have done it so why not do it like they would have really done it so I thought them tins did, and they were better than the scissors. This is the way to go, a lot faster. You lay that down there, and you just kind of slide it along the way you want it. Now, probably a new loo that's really sharp would work better. But I decided I wanted to use my knife, so that's what we're doing.
Well, y'all, we've got this shirt right here put together. Now, the arms is just a little bit stiffer than I'm happy with, but I think they will loosen up, and probably what I'll do is do some oiling. Now, the sleeves are just a tad long, which I did a purpose because I'd never made one. I wanted to be sure. And I have seen a lot of them split right here up the edges. I may do that. I may not. I don't know. But I am happy with it. Uh, and I think I'm going to leave this bottom ragged like this. Y'all, I just, I, I just like it. And so what I'm going to do is wear this shirt for a while. You're going to see it in several videos just to see how it holds up. And, and, and if this loosens up some, I think it will. It may not. Uh, I may add some oil into some of these stiffer areas in the sleeve. The shirt, had the sleeves been out of the same quality of hide that the shirt was, I would be ideal. So the jacket is all better hides. So we will be in good shape with it. But hey, y'all, buckskin shirt. I'm tickled to death. You're going to see it in a lot of videos. See me wearing this a good bit. So thank y'all for watching Spirit of the Outdoors. Remember, the best way to do things is the way you like to do it. We'll see y'all. Y'all have a good one.